we'll start with an introduction. So my name is Jennifer Rempel. I'm the Information Literacy and Resource Access Librarian here at Athabasca University Library. Here's what we'll cover today. Uh, we are going to look at library terminology. We will also look at the library website and navigating that. We will discuss the databases and the catalog, and then we'll go on to getting library help. So just to note, we are not going to um, go into detail about search strategies. That will be for uh, another time, and I have some resources for you that you can look at as well that helps you with that. So to get started, we are going to look at some library terminology. So we're going to cover catalog, databases, and journals, and journal articles. So I have another link for you here, which I'm going to post. Um, it's a Jamboard. So what we do with the Jamboard is you can go in and you can post a sticky note onto the session. So I'm going to post a link in chat there. You should be able to open that. The Google Jamboard. And what the Google Jamboard does, on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see little sticky notes. So the first page of that Jamboard is asking, what can you find in a library catalog? And then the second page of the Jamboard is, what can you find in a library's databases? So again, the link is in chat, and I'm going to share my screen so that you can see. So you can see a bunch of people. Oh, great, a bunch of you are joining. Awesome. Okay, so what can you find in a library catalog? And again, no pressure if you don't know the answer or not, because that's the point of the session. And then uh, second screen is what can you find in a library's databases? So again, if you follow the link to the Jamboard, you can go to the left-hand side and grab a sticky note and write your answer and save it. And I'll just cancel that for now. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that as I admit some more people into the session. Any answers? What do you think you can find in a library catalog? And then what can you find in a library database or in library databases? Okay, yep. Good, good. Getting some answers coming through. Excellent. So I'll give you a few seconds for that. And we'll look at our poll in the meantime. So a lot of you have. That's good. Most of you have visited the library website before. So 14% haven't, but we're, I'm glad you're here because this is the um, reason for the session too, is to show you how the library works and give you some more information about finding materials. Okay, perfect. So I'll close that now. So thank you for answering the poll. All right. Interesting. Lots of answers here. Great. And I'm hearing more people join the session. Sorry, I had to keep going back and checking and letting people in. Great. Okay. So, we got some right answers and some not correct answers, but that's okay. Because we have books. Good one. Lists of what is offered. Pretty close. Yes, a catalog is essentially a list. Authors and titles, that's right. Uh, authors and titles of books and ebooks, but we will get into that more in a minute. And then what can you find in the databases? Good, yeah, PubMed's a database. Uh, search engines, pretty much, yeah. It's, well, a search engine's a bit different than a database, but we'll get into that too. Uh, yes, yeah, so access to peer-reviewed journals, magazines, and media. Excellent. Journal articles. Yep, perfect. Good, good. So thank you for your answers there. I'm kind of getting our brains going this morning. Perfect. So catalog, we will now actually go into the presentation again. So I will reshare my document. What can you find in the catalog? You can find books, videos, and other media. So we have print format books. So AU Library Catalog. We have about uh, 150. I'm going to mute everybody. Sorry. We have about 150 thousand books in print. We have more than 330,000 ebooks. So ebooks, of course, is our focus because they're easier for you to access. And of course, videos. So we have uh, DVD or streaming online and other media. So if you need like a psychology kit, science models for your courses, we do have some of those as well. We're going to mostly focus on our uh, databases as well. So databases, a few of you had this correct, um, where in databases you can find articles book chapters, things like newspaper articles, book reviews, and more. And now we'll get into the you know, differences between the catalog and databases a bit more later on, but for now, just to have that in mind, because what you find in databases and what we also want to clarify in terms of terminology is what articles, journals, and databases are. What are the difference between these things? So I'm sure a lot of you know uh, what an article is. So essentially, of course, is uh, an article, uh, is it, 
usually written by a scholar or expert in their field, and the audience for these articles is typically going to be people like faculty, researchers, scholars, and students, right? So you're looking at usually original research reviews, that, that kind of thing. So articles are published in journals. So journals usually published on a quarterly regular basis, usually published on a regular basis, for example, quarterly, every twice a year, every quarter, that kind of thing. So they're published on a periodic basis, so they're called periodicals, or journals. Um, journals are often, not always, peer-reviewed or scholarly, so that there can be a difference there. We will get into a bit more about peer review later in terms of links where you can find more information. Generally, a peer-reviewed article has been reviewed by experts in the field to kind of make sure that it's up to standards for publication. Peer review is really important for making sure that your items are reliable. And of course, articles are studies published in journals, which are collected in databases. So databases are essentially collections of journals made available in usually electronic format. Well, in this case, yes, electronic always. And they, they're basically a searchable index. So uh, something to clarify is some journal uh, databases do include full text. Some of them don't. Some of them have a mixture of full text and citations. When we talk about Discover, uh, we will get, more, uh, get into more detail about that as well, because Discover is a very specific type of search tool. So through the AU library, you do have access to over 200 journal databases. I'll show you how to find those. And these include more than 107,000 individual journals, which adds up to millions and millions of articles. So you have access to a whole bunch of material, wide range of stuff through AU library. But it can be challenging to, na to navigate, which again, we're going to go through and <laughs> learn how to do that. So I'm going to show you some more important items here. So I'm going to go to the library homepage, so I will stop sharing the presentation, and I'm going to share my live screen. And again, thank you for all your responses here, but I'm going to go to the library homepage now. So uh, again, about 86% of you have visited this page before, which is really great. Um, lots going on here. It can be challenging, as I said, to navigate. So what we're going to focus on first, again, I'm not going to go into detail about search strategies. There's resources for you to learn about that elsewhere. But what I'm going to talk about is the tools we have. Default tool is called Discover. So Discover is interesting because it's not quite a database. Discover is what is called a meta search tool. So what Discover searches is through citations. So you can search through our library catalog as well as many of our databases at the same time using Discover. Discover doesn't search all of our databases though. Do be aware of that. I will provide more context later. So in this case, we're going to do an example. When I use Discover, I like to do the advanced search first of all. Don't have to though. You can also use just the search bar here. I'm going to just quickly demonstrate a very basic search just so you can see what Discover looks like in case you haven't used it before. So I am searching social media and misinformation. The reason I'm using quotation marks around social media is that, oh, <laughs> great, it is that that will keep the search phrases linked as a single term. So rather than looking for social or media anywhere, it'll look for social media as a single concept and misinformation. So we're looking for these two concepts together. So when you do a discover search, you can see hundreds of thousands of items on a very broad search. On the left-hand side, there are some limiters you can use. So for example, if you want to look in the library catalog, books and eBooks, you can focus on that by clicking this. You can filter by publication date. You can filter by type of item you want, etc. Most common are are most commonly you're going to want to filter usually by scholarly and peer-reviewed journals. We have magazines, we have newspapers, all kinds of material you can search through. Discover is massive, can be challenging to search because you get so many results. But what I'm going to show you now is a slightly different search, which is our scholarly article search. What this is, is a subset of Discover. So scholarly articles is the exact same search, except for it has this filter already selected. So I do my same search, social media and misinformation. You can see my results will drop a bit from 287 plus thousand to 55,000 because what it's searching is only for scholarly and or peer-reviewed 
materials. So that's the difference there. If you know you only want articles, Scholarly Article Search is good. Discover is useful too if you want more material. Okay, so uh, our journal title search is a little bit different. Sometimes what you're going to see if you do your searches is you'll see that there is a full text link, for example, here. But you'll also see that there is not always a, a full text link or a PDF attached. This is because the, the important thing to know about Discover, Discover, like I said, not actually a database because it doesn't actually contain full text. Discover contains, it's it, it basically trawls the web, it trawls our databases, and it trawls our catalog to find citations with our keywords in it. And if possible, it will link you out to the PDF. So it's a little bit complicated. It's a search tool, not a database. So sometimes you're going to have to do a little bit of work to track down full text PDF. Don't worry, though. Usually you can find it pretty quickly. And one of the ways to find full text is to do our journal title search. So, for example, I want to find an article, and again, I will link you to tutorials that explain this in more detail. This is a real rapid fire, real quick run through the library. But what the journal title search is, is it is, as I mentioned, we subscribe to periodicals. So what the journal title search is, is a basically a list of all of the journals, the specific journals, Journal of the American Medical Association, for example, that we subscribe to. So in this case, um, you can search it to see titles of journals. So as an example, if I'm interested in the Journal of Environmental Education Research, again, not an article, but a journal, I can search for that, and I can see which journal, uh, sorry, which database contains this journal. So if I want this journal particularly, I can do a search for that by title, and I can see, oh, this is in the database, Education Research Complete, and Taylor and Francis. For example, I click these links and it will take me to the journal page within the database. But again, can't really get into that right now, don't have a lot of time. I will quickly uh, get you some more context on databases in a moment because we have more which you can find here. But our library catalog, again, as I mentioned, library catalog has books and ebooks and other physical items. So if I did my same search for social media and misinformation, Books can be a good place to start with if you want more context. Typically a book, especially in the humanities, if you're doing history, literature, you might want to look for books because they provide a bit more context for information. Longer form, a journal article is going to be pretty short. So in my example here, if I want to look for specifically books and ebooks in the collection, you can see here, okay, we have a book called Navigating Fake News. Interesting. I want to take a look at this. And here you can follow the link to the actual ebook. So again, really quick uh, rundown of how things work. And I believe we have another person in the session, so I'm going to admit them. Sorry about that. Okay, and we're back. So this is, these are the basics of the search function. So um, again, discover looks for articles. This searches the uh, article databases and our catalog. This will look just for journal articles, again, within various collections. This is where you can search for specific journal titles within a database, and this is where you can find books and eBooks in our collection. So again, I mentioned pretty, quick, pretty briefly that we have a, a variety of different databases. Sometimes if you're in a specialized uh, cohort, for example, if you're in medicine, if you're doing nursing, or if you're studying art and architecture or literature, there are often specific databases that you'll want to use. So, uh, for example, we can see a list of all of our databases here. So if you go to Find Databases, again, got to click it twice, um, <clears throat> This is a list of every single individual database we subscribe to. So we have quite a few of them here. Uh, can be overwhelming. The best way to find a database that you know you want to search, if you happen to have the name, is by doing a search here. So for example, I want to look in JSTOR. A lot of people like JSTOR in the humanities, for example. So you can see, okay, here's how you access the database, JSTOR. For example, uh, PsycInfo. A lot of psychology students want to use PsycInfo. So again, this is how to find a specific database. Psych articles, PsycInfo, right there. If you're not sure what database you want to search, but you have a specific topic in mind, uh, for example, business, you can filter that way. So here we have subject areas. We have a lot of students in business and management, for example. If you want to find business and management specific databases, click on the link there. 
And here's our results. So ABI Inform, for example, Academic Search Complete, is good for business. I think we're going to filter some of these, uh, Bank of Canada, that kind of thing. So a uh, good way to sort by subject. I'm also going to show you some of our subject guides, which will help you as well. But anyway, find databases again. These are our individual collections of journals that we subscribe to, uh, sorted within different databases. Um, if you want to look at digital collections, I'll just show you this briefly. Again, don't have a ton of time today, but I will show you briefly uh, our digital collections because these are fully separate from our databases. If you want to see other, if you're, say, working on a master's degree or a dissertation, PhD uh, dissertation, and you want to look at other students' dissertations and theses, you can look here, Digital Thesis and Project Room. It's pretty useful, and these are some of our older ones as well. The Digital Reading Room, useful to know about. Uh, most of you are probably taking courses that have links to the digital reading room. The digital reading room is basically where we store and check up and preserve links to readings from your courses that the library provides access to. The library doesn't provide access to course textbooks usually, but we often have those uh, articles in the, digi in the, in the um, digital reading room. So you can search for your course by title or by number, and then you can see all the readings for your course there. But typically your course software, your Moodle, will have links to the readings already. Um, a couple of other things I want to show you at the top of the page. How to use the library. This is just a real basic guide to searching. So this is kind of our summary of how to use the library. If you want more detail on the library website, again, this session is quite brief and we only have 10 minutes left. So if you want to navigate the new library website, this is brand new. Well, it's been about a year. You can check out this orientation. Uh, you can see information on borrowing. One thing I should have made clear with our catalog uh, description was you can borrow print books. So we have many more ebooks than print books. Ebooks e are much more up to date, easier for you to borrow, that kind of thing. You just click on the link and you can read it. We do have print books as well. If you do want a print book in our collection, you can request it and we will send it to you through uh, Canada Post. So it's up to you if you want to get a print book. Uh, if you prefer digital, you can get in touch with us. We can help you find things. And this is just a bit more information on our search tools. What I will say, though, is probably the one of the most important links on this page, aside from our search bars, is get library support. Can't stress it enough, you're going to want to revisit this page. So uh, you probably want to bookmark your get library support page, because here is where you find all the information about how to use the library. Again, this is a real quick session, don't have time for a lot of detail. So. We have a page where we go through planning your research, which walks you through every single step of the way of your research assignment. Um, another really useful one that I do want to show you in detail is this one here, Guides, Tutorials, and Webinars. Again, probably the most useful link on the page. And again, I had sent you a handout on PDF in the chat. I'll resend that at the end of the session. And what I'll also do, actually, because I have your email address through the Eventbrite, I'll send you an email with that PDF as well. But essentially, this is where you're going to go if you, have, if you need help with the library and want to look at how to use things and how to do searches. So we have guides on planning your research, finding materials, evaluating, writing, citing, and communicating, like writing, um, you know, publishing, that kind of thing. And we have subject area guides as well. So again, and special topics too. So planning your research, just some more information on how to get started. What you want to look at, probably in particular, is our AU Library Guide to the Research Process. If you're new to AU or new to academic study, new to university, this is extremely useful because it goes through every step of doing your research. And what I also want to point out is our Search Like a Pro mini course. This session does not go into search strategies. I told you a few things, like you know, you want to use your ands and ors for searches, you want to use quotation marks, that kind of thing. This mini course, really useful. It takes between half an hour to 45 minutes to complete, and it just shows you how to do a search in the library and how to make the most of your keywords and search strategies and tools. So extremely useful. And again, I will point out where that is. If you go to Get Library Support, guides, tutorials, and webinars, and then our guide to the research process. And again, that link specifically to Search Like a Pro is in that PDF I sent to you in chat. Again, pretty useful material if you're a grad student. We have tutorials there. I do want to point out finding and accessing material. Again, we have a 
catalog tutorial specifically for searching books and ebooks. We have uh, more suggestions on searching specific databases. We have a discover guide. We have FAQs on ebooks. A lot of you might use Google Scholar. I'm going to be doing a Google Scholar webinar in, I think, October, if you're interested, too. We do offer interlibrary loans. I mentioned before that there is not always PDF access to uh, materials. You can find PDFs in a number of ways, usually through Google Scholar or through a journal title search. If there's an article or a book chapter that we don't have, we can probably get it to you through interlibrary loan. Interlibrary loan is a bit of a misnomer because we're not borrowing it. We're getting an article or a book chapter from another library and then emailing it to you. Oh, sorry, I think we have somebody else joining the session. Yeah. Okay, so uh, again, interlibrary loans are very useful. We have a lot of guides here that you can use to find what you need. Um, ProQuest Research Guide, also useful. Oh, one thing I want to point out too, ProQuest databases are great. Extremely useful, a lot of good material, easier, I'd say easier to search than Discover, but these materials are not often indexed in Discover because, long story short, ProQuest and EBSCO are competitors, they don't want to share information. But if you want to search in ProQuest, you can use this guide here to find out more information on how, and you find ProQuest databases here under Find Databases. So if you go to Find Databases, do a search for ProQuest, it will show you all of our ProQuest collections. And again, evaluating sources. Once you're doing your research, you want to make sure that your material is reliable. Many students have questions about peer review. What is peer review? How does it work? How do I find peer reviewed articles? How do I check if an item is peer reviewed? This research guide is all you need, all you need to know about peer review. And we have a little video again, and we talk about books. Are books peer reviewed? Hmm, how does that work? So again, lots of material for you here. Uh, on our guides, tutorials, and webinars. And finally, we do have writing, citing, and communications. Typically, uh, you're going to be citing your sources using APA, MLA, Chicago. We have a citation style guide. We also have an academic integrity uh, policy and guide as well. Really useful for you to look at. I believe we're offering this session again in November. Sort of about making sure you don't plagiarize, that kind of thing. Um, citation management tools, some of you are interested in. I'm doing a citation management tools webinar next Wednesday as well. I'm going to show you where to find more information about our upcoming events in a moment, but uh, do know that we are doing more webinars on that topic as well. We do get a lot of questions about citation management tools. And of course, other material, open access, journals and conferences, Writing Help, uh, AU's Write Site offers excellent writing support and writing coaching. You also want to probably check out, depending what subject you're studying, our subject guides by topic. So anthropology, archaeology, business. This, these guides will include lists of databases that we've sort of handpicked as being most useful for you. So for example, if you go to our Find Databases list, you see a huge amount of data, a huge number of databases. It's hard. Like I said, we over over 200 of them. How do I know what database to search if I want to do that? In this case, see if there's a guide for your topic, and it will usually have a list of ones to search. So if you're in business studies, these are some of the best ones. A lot of students need things like market research data. You can find this stuff in these collections. We have many nursing students as well. Um, our nursing guides also include a list of specific databases you want to use, so nursing and health. These sort of filter out the most useful ones, like CINAHL. The reason you might want to, and actually psychology too, like psych info, the reason you might want to use a subject-specific database is because they have search tools that are a little bit more refined. So Discover is a really broad search. It's a really good way to see what's out there on your topic. But if you're having getting too many results or you want to filter them, say, by type of research study, is it an empirical study? Uh, that kind of thing. Is it what? What uh, if it's a health study? What population is it looking at? You can filter them more easily in subject-specific databases. So these guides will include, as I said, lists of databases that are going to be most useful. So again, if you're a nursing student, lots of material here to help you. Guide to searching for nursing topics, lists of databases, that kind of thing. So again, all kinds of material. This is a real, you know, whirlwind tour here, but just giving you an idea of what's out there. And again, I highly recommend our Search Like a Pro mini course. You can find that in a few places. I did include a link to that on the PDF, so you can revisit that later. So that's also at the bottom here. And we have other topics too, so anti-racism resources, freedom to read, lots of 
problems south of the border with uh, challenged books. So if you're interested in that topic, we have a lot of material there too. Again, pandemic support, if hopefully that is not going to be a problem again. Literature reviews, all kinds of material. So again, disability uh, accessibility resource guide as well. Many students um, need su support for accessibility, and we do offer that too. So again, extremely useful. Get library support, guides, tutorials, and webinars. Good idea. Bookmark this page. I highly recommend it. One thing you will also see under this tab is research assistance. We do offer research help. Um, again, you can contact the library by email anytime. If you're having trouble finding material, if you're having trouble doing a search, if you are searching for a specific article or book and you just can't find it, we can help you with that too. I do want to quickly point out, as we only have a few minutes left, we'll go a little bit over time, but I will post this video on YouTube, um, fixing technical problems. Occasionally, if you are a very frequent library user, like I am, you'll have to clear your web browser's cache and cookies occasionally. A lot of cookies on these websites, they can get blocked up. If you run into an error, like I did in our session earlier, you might need to clear cache and cookies so you can see... Uh, information there on how to do that. So we have our tech support guide right there. And it shows you how to clear cache and cookies, which again, you occasionally have to do, unfortunately. And again, just back to this tab real quick before we wrap up, we have an FAQ. So we have our frequently asked questions. Here, so again, course extensions. These are library specific, but they do cover topics we get quite asked about a lot. So for example, Google Scholar. Here's an FAQ. How do I search Google Scholar? How do I evaluate? links there. So again, lots of useful information. Finally, I'm going to show you about AU Library, maybe more or less useful uh, services for alumni, services for community borrowers. If you are part of the Athabasca community and are not necessarily a student, you can still borrow from us. You know, a very sing staff list. You don't know who we are. We have a great, wonderful staff uh, of librarians and staff people who are here to help you. Oftentimes people forget that we are a library with people and with books and with material that you can always reach out to for help. So a list here, I'm on there somewhere, it's alphabetical. If you need you know, help from me specifically, you can go ahead and do that. Questions about this session, all kinds of stuff. But the main thing you want to know about, about our contact is the Contact Us page because any questions at all can be addressed to the library. So our email address, library at athabascau.ca. That's your go-to place for questions. Um, we do have voicemail 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We do operate, though, on business hours. So that's 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time, so Alberta time. We have some phone numbers where you can reach us. Again, you, we operate on business hours. We answer emails on business hours. You can leave a voicemail or leave an email, and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Pretty good turnaround. We usually get to you within a day. So just so you know, we have forms where you can ask general questions. You can ask about research topics, request journal articles, course materials if you need to, all kinds of things. So again, Really, really quick summary today of what we offer. Any, what I want to emphasize, though, is anytime you ever need help with the library, do not hesitate to ask because we have really, uh, I don't want to toot our horn, but really excellent staff, really helpful, uh, really eager to get you the material, you, the material you need. Again, we can help with everything. We can help you with uh, finding books, finding articles, search strategies. Uh, if there's an article that you can't find, we can do interlibrary loans. Um, writing help, you probably want to go to the right site, but we can guide you there as well. So all that to say, here's the library. This was a very whirlwind tour of what we do offer. It can be complicated. It can be hard to navigate. But I did send you that PDF document with the resources um, available. And I'm just going to go back and share my PowerPoint again. Um, just as we wrap up here. Uh, so again, I did cover a lot of material, but I'm going to post this uh, session on our YouTube channel. And there's a link. Oh, you know what? I, I'm going to actually share my screen again because I do want to point out our YouTube channel. Um, and actually, one thing I wanted to point out, too, that I had forgotten was this is not part of the library website. This is the AU Hub. Again, news.athabascau.ca slash events. This is where you're going to find out about all the events that AU as a whole offers, but also the library. As I mentioned, I am doing a session next week as well. So these are FGS. They're, they're uh, 
sponsored by the Faculty of Graduate Studies, but every student is welcome. You can be a bachelor student, you can be taking courses for fun anytime, any or any enrollment level. But I'm doing a session next week on citation management with Z Zotero. So this is how to use citation management tools to keep all your citations in one place. Uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, my colleague is offering developing your research, so how to keep organized as you do your searches. And again, all kinds of wonderful events uh, related to Indigenous students, all kinds of things. Great uh, event page here. This is where you go to keep up with what the library is doing and what AU is doing in general. And we have research data management, all kinds of workshops coming up. Literature reviews might be a big one for a lot of you if you're in nursing, for example. I also want to quickly point out, which I also had forgot, if we go to contact us, the very bottom of the page, you will see, uh, oh, get library support, sorry about that. You will see at the bottom of the get library support page. Again, I'm still getting used to this new website myself, so I, maybe I am wrong. Um, we should have a link, oh, no, it's, it's under guides, tutorials, and webinars, sorry. I'm still getting used to the new website, too. Um, you can see it's a little bit confusing. At the very bottom of this page, you will see, sorry for the scrolling, links to our Facebook page and our Twitter page. Good place to keep up with what we're doing. Um, we post all kinds of information that could be interesting to you on various topics, reminders about when the library is closed on holidays, that kind of thing. Again, library YouTube channel, I recommend you subscribe and like on Twitter, like on Facebook, and then our YouTube channel you can subscribe to as well. This is where I'm going to post the video, the recording of this session today. But you can see the YouTube channel also has videos on all kinds of useful topics. What we typically like to do is if we do a video, we want to post it in the appropriate guide. So this guide will be in our research strategies, or this video will be in our research strategy guide, for example. So again, um, accessing sources. This is also useful. This is exactly what you need. Webinar I did in May. That's useful because I show you how to actually get to full text of articles. I didn't have time today, only at a half hour, but that's a useful uh, video for you as well. And again, I will post that link uh, to the PDF that I created with all the useful links that you want to see. Okay, so it looks like we are uh, gone a bit over time. So I hope everybody found the session useful. Again, it's a bit of a, a bit of a rapid tour. Um, it's hard to cover everything because, as you have seen, we have webinars and guides that are very, very detailed on pretty much all aspects of the research and writing process. So again, just to emphasize, if you have any questions at all, uh, you can post them in chat right now or you can get in touch with the library later on um, as you do your research and find that you need perhaps more assistance. And finally, in the chat, I'm going to, as I wait for a few questions, I'm going to repost. Oh, yeah, hopefully. Oh, looks like I missed some chat questions here, the PDF. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, I didn't post the PDF originally with the invite for the event. I'm going to send a follow-up email with the link to the YouTube recording and the PDF. So I'm going to repost the PDF link here, and hopefully that will work. I, I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of uh, OneDrive because it does want me to use SharePoint for that, but you should be able to download the PDF. Um, I'm going to make sure that anyone can download it. So I'll apply those settings through so a shareable link here. Again, um, and maybe I'll just share my screen again, too, just to go over the handout. Again, if you have to run uh, as the session is uh, over time, don't worry about that. Um, there's a PDF, and I will send that and the YouTube link uh, to everybody later. Oh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you for your set. Thank you for your thank yous. Uh, so we have the handout there, and I'm really going to quickly, if we have no questions, again, really quickly share my screen again. It's always a challenge to hop back and forth, but here's the handout. So here's a link to the library. Guides, tutorials, and webinars. Again, the page I told you you should probably <laughs> you should probably bookmark. Again, accessing sources. This shows you how to find PDFs. Again, if you do a Discover search and there's no full text PDF, there are a couple of ways to get access to those PDFs. Again, more material on peer review. What is it? How do you find peer review material, etc. Books and media, so how to find, uh, how to do catalog searches and how to find various materials outside of articles. Discover guide, 
general guide to the research process, again, recommended for people who are maybe returning students or are new to university or just need a refresher. And it also so shows you the specifics of searching at AU library, because maybe you've used other libraries before. Again, interlibrary loans. I did mention interlibrary loans briefly, but one thing I do want to show you uh, is, again, we can get you book chapters, conference proceedings, and journal articles. If we don't have what you need, let us know. If it's a book, we can maybe do some assistance there, but typically interlibrary loans are for articles. Think of anything that can be photocopied and scanned. So we have request forms here for students. If there's an article you need that we do not have, we can probably get it for you pretty quickly. Usually it takes a day or two. It can depend. We have people requesting microfiche. That can take a bit longer. <laughs> uh, and for students specifically, you, you want to make sure you're, you're requesting things that can be scanned and copied, and that will be emailed to you. Um, and just back to our PDF, unless I lost that. And I did. Too many links. Here we are. Okay. Again, guide to citation style. You're probably going to have to use APA MLA citation. That can be a huge headache. We have guides on that. And we have information about citation managers. And again, the right site. Very useful. I have a link to the right site here. They're outside of the library, but we do work with them quite a bit on webinars on academic integrity and citing. It's so very useful. They offer writing coaching and detailed information about how to write academically. And they can do citation help, too. Again, our YouTube channel, where you'll find this video later. Again, Search Like a Pro mini course. Highly recommended as a companion to this webinar. I couldn't go into searches. This will tell you how to search within the library and to do the most effective searches as you can. And finally, our Hub of Events page. This is where you're going to go to find information about events that AU is putting on, as well as what the library is offering in the future. We are in the new semester, so we're offering a lot of webinars. There, a lot of them are through the Faculty of Graduate Studies, but that's okay. If you're not a graduate student, it still applies to you. So don't worry about that. You can take a look at those.